So hello on this rainy British day. Uh, so I thought I'd build this kit. Um, so this is a fidget spinner with electronics in it. So I'm usually the very last person uh, to follow any kind of trend. So I finally have a fidget spinner after they've been in existence for I don't know, getting on for a decade probably. So what we've we got here, we've got a plastic case, a little circuit board, that's the axle I suppose, and then in the bag we have a nice little bearing. the core of the spinner. There's a few screws in there. There's four transistors so it's obviously not that sophisticated in terms of electronics. So it's the S8550 which I think is a common generic sort of NPN transistor. And we have three little capacitors, ceramic capacitors, and a number of resistors of three different values. All right, that's marked on. That's quite useful. 10K, 1K, and 1 meg. Uh, that's a battery holder, or two, two battery holders. Actually, I didn't think about that. I might have to. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got any small disk batteries. So I'll have to. Uh, it doesn't have any instructions with it, so I don't know what size battery it will be. Maybe it says on the circuit board. Oh, yeah, CR927. So I'm going to have to find some CR927s. What's that? Oh, that's a tiny switch. A push button switch. PCB mounting. And a few little screws to hold the case together. And finally, four LEDs. And the LEDs go up here so they form a line here so I guess we can expect some some patterns or concentric circles as it spins around. So I don't think this is going to be particularly difficult to assemble. Uh, the switch goes on the back I think all the other components are on the front. So let's warm up the soldering iron and get started. So I think we'll start with the resistors. So up here there's the 1Ks. Uh, so there's five, five 1Ks on this bandolier. Oh, there's one here as well. So let's put those ones in their places first. So uh, for those people that have been watching my channel for a while, I would, I would like to apologise for the lack of video output in recent months. Um, there's, there's nothing nothing wrong here. I've been surviving the pandemic OK. And I've had my uh, had my two shots my vaccine shots and I would highly recommend that everyone do the same to uh, try and kill off this virus in the wider community. 
So yeah, there's no, nothing wrong in particular. I've just been very busy this year. I mean, I've been very fortunate um, that my work can largely be done from home. And so I've just been sat at my desk uh, working. And it's just been one of those years when a lot of projects had to be developed uh, one after another and I've just been a bit squeezed for time that's all but I hope to remedy that situation now I've got a few bits of footage in the can where I started things but didn't finish them yet uh, so I'd like to try and accelerate my output in the next few weeks and months and um, thank you for bearing with me really right use my trusty old Antex soldering iron <clears throat> I, I did see uh, I did see a comment a few weeks ago somebody had said that uh, you know it was terrible that I was using this old-fashioned soldering iron and I should uh, invest in a new one um but in fact, in, in fact, I do have a number of soldering irons uh, that I've bought over the years. Um, and I sometimes use them. You've probably seen me a few times using that uh, rechargeable one that I bought in Lidl, which was, you know, very good for the money, I thought. Um, but I think the, the fact is that I've just got used to that particular soldering iron, so my old-fashioned Antex. It's one of those brands that, you know, because it's been popular with uh, enthusiasts in the past, you can still buy the, uh, the bits for it. And I just find it, you know, comfortable and convenient to use. It's, you know, it's like like an old pair of slippers really actually not that I wear slippers but you know what I mean okay that wasn't so good Okay, so that's the one case in place. Uh, so there's a couple of 10 Ks. Well, actually three, three 10 Ks on the bandolier. So there's one at the bottom here and two on here. So I'll do those ones next. Yeah, so I hope everyone out there is keeping well and uh, I hope we're all headed towards happier times in terms of public health. this kit now. Uh, I've had it for a few months. Uh, 
uh, I must admit being a bit of a sucker for anything with um, anything with flashing LEDs. is probably why I bought this. Unfortunately, I've ruined my um, ruined my snips. There's a couple of holes in the blade now because I I foolishly tried to use it to uh, cut some very stiff wire. So there was some. Uh, some wire making it one of those uh, coils in a battery box and I tried to cut them with the snips and I just basically gouged holes in the blade okay so there's also three one megs ones go either side of the axle. So this is where that bearing will live. So obviously you set the set the bearing in the in the case and then that kind of engages with that hole. too much solder here because I don't want to narrow the hole in case the case is a tight fit of course. There's two types of transistor, is it? Oh no, so it's marked 9013, which is another generic sort of transistor. Oh no, there is, there's a different one, 8550. Let me just look those up. Yeah, okay, so the um, the 8550 is a, is a PMP, so I better get that in the correct place. So that's a 9013. 8550. And 9013, yeah. So I've got three 9013s, which are NPN transistors, and then the, uh, the PNP goes in here. 
and there's a nice silk screen on there so you can see which way around the transistor goes without thinking about it too much. I'll try and make these quite snug because I uh, don't know how much clearance I've got in the case. Yeah, both the, the 9013 and the 8550 are transistors that you very regularly come across in these uh, Chinese kits. That last this one looks a bit shaky, hang on. Yeah, so you come across them time and time again, sort of generic types of transistor. And I've got a few spares from, you know, sometimes they give you too many. So I've got a few spares of these. <clears throat> But when I was first doing electronics, it would always be something like a BC109 or BC547 or something. But you don't seem to see those so much these days. And the transistors are often these these uh, sort of plastic cased ones, so you don't see the ones in metal cans. But then I guess to a large extent electronics has moved on quite a lot and um, you know it's often cheaper and more cost effective these days to make things using microcontrollers rather than using discrete electronics so it's not so much built using uh, transistor circuits solder on the end there It'll look a little bit dry okay so I need some capacitors, these all the same value, <coughs> so 104, 104, and 104, so it doesn't matter where these go, so there's a couple here around the axle. These are very small value capacitors, um, so I would guess the LEDs have quite a high flash rate 
um, which would kind of make sense because the when the fidget spinner is spinning, they're gonna the LEDs are gonna be going past with quite a high rotational rate. So to make patterns, you probably need to flash the LEDs very fast. I haven't actually seen one of these in operation. Um, I didn't really seek out any information on how to build or what this thing does. So it'll be a surprise for me also. Right, so LEDs are the next thing. These are marked with the uh, plus and minus. So it should be, I think, the, well, it's usually either the long lead or if you can see in, there's a smaller contact in there, which is the anode. And so if we get a little battery, we should be able to light it up. Ah, oh, yellow. Okay, so that's a yellow one. I wonder what we've got here. Oh, that one doesn't seem to light. There's a red. Oh, green. Okay. What's that one? Blue. Uh, <clears throat> so there's no no guidance as to which one goes where. So I guess I'll just put them in randomly. matter I suppose. It's interesting that they've got the same uh, same current limiting resistor in each case because different coloured LEDs often have different um, uh, different voltage drops so you so you uh, you often need to put different values in to get the same brightness right so I'm just gonna Solder one leg on each. Which gives me the chance to. Oh, I didn't even get that one in, did I? Let's just put a bit of solder in there. Okay. Because then I can uh, actually push them down flush on the board. So. Just heat that up again. Push the lead all the way down. Try and get it straight.
so those look nice and level. Just put a bit more on that end one there, that looks, I can still see the hole on that one. Just leaves the uh, battery, little battery boxes, battery clips. I don't know what they're called. I think these need to be soldered on top because these the, it doesn't actually uh, those prongs don't actually stick through the hole. So I think I might have to solder that on the top surface. So these have to be these have to sit pretty flush uh, otherwise there's not not going to be enough tension on the battery and can't have the batteries falling out of my fidget spinner I'm ruining my leisure time I think I might just fill the holes in the back as well that we get a good electrical contact. Oh, there's the this, this switch there as well. Nearly forgot that. That goes on the back. Okay, you've got to get these the right way round so that the... because there's a little... Uh, little flange there to stop the battery pushing all the way through and obviously you want the hole open on this side so you can easily get the batteries in and out. holes as well. Which just leaves the switch for the back and then uh, we're on to uh, mechanical assembly. corners in there and try and tease it into the right position. Looks pretty good I think. It's the right position and now we just solder the other the other pins. Yikes. Need more hands for soldering. Right, so that should be that. Um, OK, 
Okay, let's put the uh, the bearing in its hole. Might be a tight fit. Bearings often are. Okay. And uh, that one's where the switch should be, isn't it? So it must be the other way up. Capacitors in the way actually. I wonder if they have to lie down. Yeah, that will do it, I think. Uh, yeah, so we arrange this one here so that we've got the switch under the little bendy piece of plastic. I can't feel whether that's making the switch go or not. That's fairly tight actually. <clears throat> I think I might have to um, push those transistors down a bit further in order to assemble the case. Let's see if I can do that. I'm just trying to apply a bit of pressure. Maybe I can fold them down a bit. Let's try that. Yeah, just fold them forwards. There we go. That fits better now. Um, we could have to uh, make a journey to find some batteries for this, I think, because I don't have any uh, CR927s. to pop down to uh, Poundland, see what they have available. Uh, it's really rather amazing, isn't it, how many different types of disc battery that there are. It's unbelievable that uh, they made so many in different shapes and sizes. Stupid, really. Spare screw for some reason. Don't know where that would go. Right, and we push these into the bearing. There we go. So we've got the spinning. So I just need to locate some batteries now. Okay, so I've got some batteries now. Uh, so let's insert a couple of these CR27s. open on this again. I'll take one of these things out. Hey, the 
lights are on. Right, so if we press the button. lines I presume that's all it does I mean the you saw the circuitry it's very simple it's just a handful of transistors so it's not gonna have a lot of really exciting patterns I suppose that just it seems to be a simple on off switch on the back So I might um, might film it a bit later when um, when it's darker, so that you get more of an impression of uh, what kind of display the LEDs give. So I've got the uh, circuit diagram here, the schematic. So I thought we'd just spend a few moments looking at the circuit. So this part on the right here is a, what's called a multi-vibrator circuit. So this configuration with the two NPN transistors and the two charging capacitors here. So we'll look at that in, in a minute. But this is basically what flashes the LEDs. So if we ignore that bit for a moment, what we have on this side is, uh, so we've got the power source over here on the far left. And this is basically the switch circuit here, which allows the uh, the momentary switch to switch the circuit on and off. So this transistor here is basically providing power to everything on the right hand side of the of the circuit. So basically I think what's happening here, I'm not 100% sure, but I think what's happening is that at the beginning of the world when you... Uh, so this capacitor here can be charged through this path here so, it, so it's going to hold some charge and then when you momentarily press this button what happens is that powers the base of this transistor which means that current will then flow down through here so that now we have a current path that's coming through these resistors here and to ground through the um, through this MPN transistor and because there's this path to ground which is lower resistance than this resistor here which is one meg what happens is it's also a path to ground for this PNP transistor so here we have the the current can flow through the emitter here through the base and out through this path and that is enough current to switch this transistor on so now this transistor starts to conduct and it can provide power to the right hand side of the the circuit. Now when you press it again what I think is happening here is that uh, the so this this is going to momentarily ground the NPN transistor because if this now holds no charge then shorting this out will make any current from this path here charge the capacitor so for a moment this transistor will go off and obviously if that transistor is off there's no current path for this one and so this one goes off as well so it's so it's a momentary momentary on off switch circuit basically now on this side this is quite a common configuration so you see this in a lot of places so basically we've got one set of leds driven through this npn transistor another set of leds driven through that side and what happens is these alternate. The, the way that this circuit works is when this one is on, this one will always be off. Uh, I won't analyse exactly why that is here, but you can find descriptions of that elsewhere. So here we've got the 
the red and the blue and then this is the yellow and the green and if you look very closely at the fidget spinner when it's running you can see that the red and the blue are switching together and likewise the the green and the and the yellow over here uh, so that's just a, like a quick um, run through of how this circuit works and it's you know it's very efficient it's only got four transistors so you know nice piece of design really so finally let's switch it on it's a bit darker now so you might be able to see the patterns a bit better 